In 2018, we left all we had ever known behind in Florida to make our way to Alaska in an attempt to drive our truck camper from Alaska to Argentina. We made it to the top of the world and turned south only to confront one challenge after another. But along the way, we fell in love with the road and realized that our call to wander would need an RV with a little more space. So we sold our truck camper and purchased a 22-year-old Class C motorhome that needed just a little bit of TLC. This is the story of how we spent six months remodeling our new home on the road. Hey, Chris here with Call to Wander. Today is solar panel day. I'm excited and I'm a bit anxious because it's a little bit of a project, um, but the hard work, the thinking's through, and I'll share some of that with you in just a minute. Today I'm gonna be installing our solar panels on our Class C RV. We've got 640 watts of solar panels uh, for 160 watt Renogy panels and we're going to be getting that all installed today. We love Renogy. A little side note, we've been with Renogy since our beginning, which was pretty close to the beginning of their RV line. And so um, we've stuck with Renogy for the most part with all of our solar components. We'll share with you all those components as we go along. There's a link in the description, of course, for a 10% discount when you're shopping uh, with Renogy. They're highly competitive price-wise and they're great products. Again, this is our third go around with solar between our truck camper, the upgraded solar we did in our truck camper and now installing our Class C. And we are totally happy with the Renogy products and how everything comes together in our power system. So to kind of walk through the process of what I'm gonna to do today, um, and I'm gonna divide this into two parts, the not on the roof part and the on the roof part and or the non-wiring part and the wiring part. And so with that being said, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to flip over each of the solar panels and we're going to mount Z brackets. Z brackets are the common standard way of mounting um, on a roof, mounting solar panels on a roof. There are some very creative ways and we were, we had creative ways with our truck camper of not actually drilling into the roof of the RV, but we're not so worried about that. We just sealed our roof with Henry's Tropical. We've got all kinds of layers of protection from the water that I'll share with you as we go along to make sure that we don't have any worries about leaks for putting screws into the roof. If you're concerned about putting screws in the roof, there's lots of resources out there for very creative ways that people have come up with not having to install solar panels directly on the roof. We thought about that and we decided it wasn't that big of a deal for us. For us, these solar panels are gonna last us several years. They're great, they're efficient. The technology is changing, but it's not changing so fast that these will be obsolete and two, three years down the road. But at this point, we're gonna put the Z brackets on and then we lift the solar panels up onto the roof and figure out where we're gonna put them. Got a pretty good idea, but I'm gonna make it nice and tight because we wanna not have to use more wire than we actually need. So we're gonna make it nice and tight and then punch a hole in the roof. That's the scariest part of this whole bit, but we've got a nice cover for that. Once the hole is in the roof and the wires drop down inside, it's pretty easy from there. We've got our controller pretty much set up in place in the battery compartment. We just link everything together, all the wires down underneath and we're good to go. This is a relatively simple job that you can do if you're like me and you're the average person. I'd say I'm a little bit more than average now with RVs and that's why you're hopefully giving us a time of day because we've learned from our mistakes along the road. When we first started out this path with solar, we didn't know anything. Uh, we just literally plugged and played because that's what we saw we could do. Some things are plug and play, but we'll show you what to think about as you go along. If I can do it, you can do it. If you can do it, everybody can do it. So it's not a challenging thing if you're considering putting solar on your RV. Um, this is just one way of doing it. This is the common way. We're not going to do anything crazy um, out of the ordinary. Um, but we do want you to understand that it's something that you are totally capable of doing if you can get up on the roof and if you can have the courage to put four screws per panel, actually eight screws per panel into the roof. So let's talk about the components for the solar system right now. So you have your solar panel. And again, for us, it's a 160 watt monocrystalline uh, Renogy solar panel. And what that means is it's the, the best of the best at this point. Again, 160 watts is pretty good for the size. It packs a pretty good punch. You can buy these huge panels that have 300 watts. You can buy smaller panels that have 100 watts or less. We found these that are a nice middle ground for us at 160 watts. Takes up a fair amount of space, but it also gives us quite a bit of power. For us, 
this was our solution. For you, you may want to shop around. We've got a great post on the different solar panel options that we would recommend you look into. So for us, these 160 watt panels should fit pretty perfectly up top. The next part of the panel, of course, is a Z bracket actually mounting it to the, to the roof. So the Z bracket goes into the back side of the solar panel and then it's got four, two screw holes for each Z bracket. So there's four Z brackets that hold the panel in place. And then you've got these eight screws you put into the roof. We're gonna put butyl tape underneath the Z bracket between the Z bracket and the roof. So that's gonna help create a seal, a watertight seal. When the screw goes through, it'll pull some of that butyl tape down with it. And the butyl tape will squish around the hole and make it watertight. We did put Henry's Tropical Roof Sealant on there. So we've got a silicone roof. We really can't put anything but silicone on it. We can't put Eternabond tape, which was what we would have considered doing. After we put the screw holes in, we would put Dicor lap sealant around it, put Eternabond tape over it, and then put Henry's Tropical. But because we already put the Tropical over the whole roof, we're not gonna be able to put the Eternabond or the Dicor lap sealant directly on the roof. So what we're gonna do is after we put these Z brackets in, we've screwed them in, we will um, go ahead and paint some more of the Henry's Tropical over that. And so we'll create this nice um, solid silicone covering which will leave us pretty confident that we won't have any kind of water trying to come in through the screws. Now, with the solar panels being mounted on the roof, before we mount them, we're gonna make sure the wiring all reaches. We're gonna do what's called series parallel wiring. What that means is there's series um, connections and there's parallel connections. If you go parallel, like what we did with our batteries, you connect the positives together and then separately you connect the negatives together and then you run your po one positive and one negative into your charge controller. Series parallel, what we're gonna do is connect in series, which means we're gonna connect one positive to the negative of another panel. And we're gonna do that on the other side because we've got four panels. We're gonna put two of them in series together on either side of the RV. And then we're gonna take the positives from those two separate sides and we're gonna run those positives together in parallel and we'll do the same thing with the negatives in parallel and then run those wires into the roof. The reason we're doing it this way is we wanna keep amperage down. Amperage is the amount of current that flows through wires and if you're pushing too many amps through a thinner wire, it's gonna melt the wire, it's gonna cause problems. So we wanna keep the amperage down that's why we're connecting in series and then in parallel. And so there's some great advantages and disadvantages to this. Again, we'll link to more information in the description about how you can understand more about your solar power system, but this is our particular setup. So once we have everything wired and the solar panels are connected in series and parallel, we're gonna make sure that we have a fuse on the positive connection of um, one set of panels, of, so one pair. We'll have a fuse, a 15 amp inline fuse on the positive side. The other set will have a 15 amp inline fuse on the positive and then those will run together into a connector, a Y connector or a Y branch connector. And from there, those two will come into one and then that one positive will run down into our RV and the two negatives will do the same thing except you don't fuse the negatives. The two negatives will simply run together into that Y branch connector. And then from there, one wire will come out. So we'll be bringing two wires into the camper, one positive, one negative. The last component of the solar system is gonna be your solar charge controller. We have a 40 amp MPPT solar controller, which is, again, it's a Renogy controller. The MPPT controller is far more efficient than the PWM controller, which is the alternative. And MPPT controllers have come down in cost tremendously from just a couple years ago when we got started. We're gonna be running those two wires from the truck or from the solar panels through the roof. We've got a cover that's gonna go over that so we keep it watertight, keep it protected from the weather. The positive and the negative wires will then go from the roof into the camper and they will connect into a breaker switch that we've got set up. The breaker switch acts as another fuse, another way of preventing any kind of damage to any of the components. And from the breaker, it's gonna go, the positive will go into the breaker from the solar panel, and then from the breaker, it will go into the solar charge controller. The negative will go right from the panels through the roof and right into the solar charge controller. The solar charge controller 
will regulate and monitor the inputs, the amount of power coming in from the, the solar panels, and it will determine how much energy the batteries need, and it will allow just enough energy to go into the batteries without harming the batteries. If you plug your solar panels directly into your batteries without a controller, you're going to cause all kinds of problems. Don't do that. You've got to have a solar charge controller. The charge controller does exactly what it says. It controls the charge. So if there's excess energy coming in from the solar panels, which a lot of times there will be, it discharges that in the form of heat and it only allows a certain amount of current to go into your batteries. Super important. So from there, we of course will have the positive and the negative go in our case to our positive and negative bus which connects to our batteries and there we will have our full solar panel set up. So that's a lot of talking. Let's go ahead and get started. First step is going to be to mount these Z brackets. I've got these four panels, 160 watts each. So we're going to do these four panels, get all the Z brackets mounted, and then we will ship them up to the roof and get started on the roof side. This is your Z bracket. Shaped like a Z, sort of. What we're going to do is we're going to mount this onto our panel so that these will then be mounted onto the roof. The two holes are for the screws to go into the roof. So that means this big slot right here is going to match up somewhere on the back side of the panel. Most panels, all Renogy panels come with the pre-drill holes. Most panels from other companies have them as well. You also get hardware. So Renogy gives us these, which are to screw into the roof. And I'll talk about that in a minute. They're too long. We don't need that for this part. What we need is this set of hardware. We also need a wrench, correctly sized. So this is metric size 10. And a ratcheting wrench as well. It's a relatively simple process. So there's a little clip here, a little tab, and that's gonna hold over the edge. So it can't slide any further. We're gonna use four holes doesn't really matter if you use the inner ones or the outer ones. The outer ones will be a little bit more secure for our purposes. So we take the bolt, put a flat washer on it, come up from the underside. Then we're going to put another flat washer, then a split washer, and the nut. And then very simply, we do that three more times and we'll have all of our Z brackets mounted. All right, so now it's time to go up on the roof and a very important step is to make sure that you have something to cover the solar panels with while you're working. So the easiest thing is just to take the cardboard that they came in, cut a nice square out of it and set it over the solar panel once you get them up on the roof where sunlight can hit them. Even if you're in the shade, you want to make sure you cover them because there's still sunlight that can get to them. And any amount of uh, sunlight is going to create the energy inside the panels. You don't just stop all that stuff. So cover them up and that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and get this up there. And then we're going to lift the panels up onto the roof and get them in position before we screw them down and wire everything together. All right, so I'm up on the roof right now and I've got the solar panels laid out where I think they're gonna go. I'm going to connect everything just to make sure that the panels don't need to be moved around before I screw them in place. If I screwed them in place and got them all set and then I found that wires were pinching or I needed a longer or shorter run of wires, that would be an issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect everything the way that it should be connected. First, I'm gonna cover up the solar panels. I wanted to show you what it was gonna look like, but I'm gonna cover the solar panels back up with the cardboard and then I'm gonna get everything connected because once I start connecting things, I mean, right now, a little bit of sun on the panels is, um, they're doing their thing. They just don't have anywhere to transport that energy. So I need to make sure to cover them up, try to stop that energy from being collected because I don't have anywhere to take it right now. So I'll go ahead and get started on loosely wiring everything and then figuring out where I'm gonna drill the hole in the roof. Go ahead and run those wires down into the camper. And then at that point, I'll make sure everything's perfectly in place. And then I will start setting the screws into the roof. Okay, so what you want to notice before, also before you screw the solar panels down onto the roof, is know 
which of the leads is the positive and which is the negative. So underneath each panel, there's an indicator, but essentially for these Renogy panels, this is the positive. It's got a male end and there's a little red gasket right there. And then this female end is a negative. That's important because we're gonna add one of these fuses, which goes on the positive. This is a 15 amp fuse. So there's the male end with the rubber on it, and there's the female end. So the solar panel will clip in the male to the female here, and then out pops the other male, which will then be able to run to the positive Y branch connector. So the positive male will pop in there of one, positive male from the other set will pop in there, and then we've got this male's end, which will then connect to the wires that are running into the camper. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of this connected. So the first thing I'm gonna do is connect each of the pairs of panels in series first. And so I set them in close proximity so the wires should stretch really, really easily. In fact, I've got excess amount of wire. Um, so the positive of one panel to the negative of another, and then I'll do that on the other side as well. And then we'll run all those wires together. This is one pair. Here's the positive. Here's a negative. When I connect these two together, it will link these in series. So they'll be operating as one solar panel. And then I've got this other positive left over from the negative that was connected here. And this negative left over from the positive that was already connected. So these two will run to meet the other pair of solar panels. So a very important thing happened because I didn't screw the panels into place and I played with the wiring. I actually switched the two pairs that I was gonna um, wire in series. And so now I have a front pair and a back pair instead of a driver's side and a passenger side. And that's simply because now I don't have to run an extra bit of wires to connect the two. So now that panel and this panel are connected in series with that wire right there connected the positive and the negative, and then in the front, this one and this one are connected right here. On their own, there are two different systems now um, where they're in series. And now the negatives from the two panels come together here into this Y branch. And the positives now have the fuse on them from each um, set of series panels. So this positive wire coming out of the top set has its fuse. This one coming out of the, the bottom set has this fuse. Goes in together. So there is, this is where we're going to connect and run into the camper the positive wire. And then here is where the negative wire will connect and go into the camper. What I've done now is I've got our two in series, uh, our two in the front, our two in the back. And then when I connect them through the Y branch, we've connected them in parallel, and now I just need to run that down into the camper where we have our battery set up and our solar charge controller. So I've got to go ahead and make that decision about where the hole is going to go. And that's going to take some thinking because I want to make sure I put it in the best spot for us inside, which will be into a cabinet inside the camper. All right, so back inside the camper, I want to remind you, in case you missed the video on hooking up our power, our batteries, our inverter, um, you can go back and check out that video. But just a reminder that our power center is down here underneath the couch that we built. And so here is our 40 amp charge controller. And this is a fuse where the wires are gonna come in or the breaker. So I gotta run wires into here from the solar panel and then they're gonna come out through here and go to our positive and negative bus against the wall. So to get the wires here, we're looking at bringing them up from inside this cabinet so in here somewhere, I'm gonna punch a hole and bring the wires down from the roof into this cabinet. And then we'll run the wires down along the wall indiscreetly, and then loop them into our power area and hook them up into the charge controller. 
So I'm being very cautious about where I drill this hole because I want to make sure I get it right. There's also some wires that are already up there and I don't know exactly where they're running. So when I look in here, there's three sets of wires and I don't know if they're running this way or if they're running that way. So if I drill in here and I hit one of them, that's gonna cause a lot of headache. This is where I usually panic and freak out. And so I'm not gonna freak out, nor am I gonna panic, but I am gonna go have breakfast and think about it. So I'll be back in just a minute. Well, drilling that hole was as scary as I thought um, because I see daylight now coming from the roof, which is okay because when I replaced the vent fans up here, there's big holes that we had to cover up. So now you can see where the wires are gonna come in. Right there. So let's go back up on the roof and get everything all set up that way. Okay, so what I'm doing now, I've got the hole drilled. I've got the wires going into the roof. I'm pretty happy with where the solar panels are located. They're connected in series and then in parallel, all the wires fit perfectly. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking a little piece of butyl tape and I'm putting that underneath the Z bracket between the Z bracket and the roof, which is just an extra layer to uh, help seal the hole that's going in with the screws. And then I'm gonna screw that in. It's gonna squeeze the butyl tape out and drag a little bit of the butyl tape into that hole, seal it off really good. And once I get all of these solar panels screwed into the roof, then I'm gonna come back over with some Henry's Tropical, put them around the screws, and then go ahead and paint over the whole Z bracket. Okay, so where we left things yesterday with the heat yesterday was I brought everything inside the, um, the RV. So now I've got my two wires right here, my positive and my negative. They're coming in from the solar panels. Solar panels are disconnected up on the roof and they're covered up with the cardboard. So there's no charge coming down to these wires, but I need to connect them into the circuit breaker that will then um, go into the MPPT controller. And then I also need to connect them from the controller to the positive bus and the negative bus, which then goes into our batteries and gets everything charged. First, I need to decide where these wires are going. When you look at our cabinet space, they've come in up here. I'm gonna run them diagonally over to that corner and then down and I'm gonna punch a hole through here and drop them down and run them along this wall on down. So that's the first step. I feel much more comfortable drilling holes inside the camper than I did filling, uh, drilling holes on the roof. I finished running the wires from the roof through a hole in the cabinet and down the wall and now into our DC power center area. And so what I need to do, I've already cut the wires to the right size, so now I need to add the terminals so that I can hook the positive up to the breaker and the negative is gonna go right into the solar charge controller and then um, I'll have the, the wires that I need to have terminals coming out of the controller to go to the bus. When you're disconnecting batteries or power source, get rid of the negative first and then the positive and when you're adding it back, add the positive first and then the negative. So I can plug the positives both in and be fine but I don't wanna mess with the negatives yet. I just wanna make sure that I've got them properly sized and have the terminals on them so I can hook everything up accordingly. All right, I got all the terminal connectors on the different wires and the wires cut to the right sizes. So now what I need to do is plug everything in. 
And to do that, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the power um, to the battery. So I'm going to unplug the negative terminal of the battery um, just so I can plug everything else in. So I'm going to disconnect that, which means I'm going to kill the lights and the fan and all the great stuff in here uh, momentarily. Then I'm going to hook everything up quickly. I'm going to leave the solar panels not plugged into the controller. That's the very last thing to do. So with your MPPT controller or your PWM controller, if you have one of those, you want to make sure that you're plugging in the solar panels last, the negative of the solar panels last. So you want to make sure that the battery hookups coming out of the um, controller are hooked up first, then hook up the positive between the solar and, um, and the controller, and then the very last wire will be the negative. All right, now everything's connected except for that one negative wire that's going from the solar panels into the charge controller. I have disconnected everything up on the roof and I've covered the solar panels, so now I'm gonna hop up there on the roof. I'm going to reconnect all my MC4 connections. So that's going to allow the solar panels to pump juice through the wires. And then um, I'm going to remove the cardboard cutouts that will allow the sun to shine on the solar panels. And between those two things, I should have energy coming down here. I'll hop down here, plug in that negative, um, that last negative wire into the solar charge controller, and God willing, things don't blow up. Shouldn't happen, but you know how it goes with me. So, that being said, I'm gonna go get up on the roof. I'm not gonna show that, you've been up there enough already. I'm just gonna go back up there, snap everything together, make sure everything looks good and is connected the correct way, and then uh, I will come back down. Okay, everything's hooked up on the roof, and now it is time for the moment of truth, which is, will this work? When I plug the negative into the MPPT controller from the solar panel, remember the battery's already hooked up, the positive and negative are already going to the battery. Um, so now it's just a matter of the input from the solar panel, the negative being the last wire to connect. And when I connect that, two things should happen. The first thing that should happen is our, our controller should come to life. So it's got a screen there, it should pop up and it should say all kinds of stuff. And the second thing is that our solar charge controller should start to flash indicating that it's receiving charge at the batteries or into the batteries. Let's do this. In this particular controller, it'll show me that the solar panels are receiving charge and that it is going to the battery. One point six amps going from the solar panels into the battery. That's fantastic. Well, that means one point six amps. I'm in the shade right now, except for a tiny little piece of a panel. So that's totally fine that there's such a small amount of amperage going into the batteries. But the cool thing is I can see the charge controller flashing right now as well, indicating that the batteries are in fact charging and I can see the state of charge. That amperage is greater than, even though it was one point whatever amps, it's greater than these lights. So each light is 0.2 amps that it's drawing. And then our other lights and our ambient draws about one amp. So I'm drawing about 1.4 amps and we should be getting a positive, a net positive going into the batteries right now. So looking at that, positive 0.27, 1.6 amps in, about 1.4 amps out, means a net positive of 0 0.2, 0 0.27 amps. So what does this mean? This means that I successfully installed our solar panels in the last episode. We connected all the battery and the inverter and got everything set up from a DC power standpoint, minus the solar panels, and now we've completed the solar panel install. Solar panels are totally wired into the controller, which is then hooked up to the battery via um, our positive and negative bus bar. Everything's working the way that it should. I'm 100% pleased right now. This will give us 640 total watts of solar panel capacity that will drop down into our 420 amp hours battery and we'll be able to draw from that using our 2000 watt inverter 
everything is glorious right now. The inverter remote is set up so we can flip it on and off without having to get under the sofa. We have got the battery monitor telling us exactly the state of charge of the battery, plus what's going on in the solar panels. Um, so if there was ever an issue, if we were in full daylight and we were actually drawing and not receiving, then I would know that something was wrong. I could check the controller if need be. But right now, everything is awesome. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Hopefully you learned something. If you have any questions, please leave a comment or send us an email if it's specific to your setup. We'll do our best to help you. We respond to every question, every comment. Please leave positive comments. If you notice anything that we could do better, let us know in a positive way. We're always looking to improve. We're always looking to correct anything that could be misinformation for our viewers and our readers. Be sure to check out our website for more detailed information of exactly how we did this, the components that we had, and be sure to check out Renogy and use our link and our coupon code to receive 10% off your purchase there. We love Renogy for all of our power needs and this is fantastic. Please make sure to like this video, share it with anybody who you think could find it useful, and thanks again for being a part of our journey. We'll see you on the road.